monsters are more experienced than newcomers entering the gate. Craig was distracted from his thoughts by the unusual clash of swords and turned his gaze to the center of the room. A lizard knocked a sword out of a warrior's hand, sending the weapon flying. The man seemed nearly defeated. The conscious man himself stared at the massive shadow of the creature looming over him in fear. The reptile raised its arm, intending to finish the warrior with a powerful blow. Craig reacted immediately, and time seemed to slow around him. However, the lizard had already delivered the devastating blow. Instantly, sparks from the creature's sword blinded everyone. However, the monster's weapon encountered an unexpected obstacle. The lizard growled in frustration as its massive energy sword failed to cut the person in front of it in two. The warrior, unaware of his luck, knelt down while Craig advanced to confront the enemy. For a moment, Craig paused to survey the room, trying to understand who could have used such a complex spell to save the warrior. He saw Shin creating a shadow sword using mana. Shin sensed the scrutinizing gaze and tried to discern its source. He turned slowly, searching for the origin of the unusual sensation, and met Craig over Kill's eyes, which were studying the boy intently. The battle continued, and with the help of healing spells, the warrior's health quickly recovered. Battle mages created fireballs, while tanks held off the attacks of the large red lizard. Behind them, Shin counted the participants in the dungeon mission. He counted each warrior one by one, including himself, but stopped at the ninth. He stared at Craig standing near the guild leader. There were ten people in the dungeon, even though Shin was sure only nine had entered. Craig asked the man what he was doing in the midst of such a fierce battle. Without much talk, the assassin charged at the enemy in an attempt to destroy the lizard, but the creature managed to deflect the attack. The assassin's sword shattered into pieces. The assassin fell on his back, exposed to the next attack. The support mage turned to help his friend. The monster raised its giant weapon above its head. In a moment, two team members would lose their lives. Craig noticed the newcomer's dire situation and immediately reacted to the danger. Craig launched a swift attack at the enemy, pushing off the stone floor and raising his katana, ready to deliver a crushing blow to the enemy. Shin thought he hadn't expected Craig's help and directed his attention to the bag next to him. Craig used one sword, while the other was in excellent condition, and Shin thought it was a spare weapon. Shin continued to watch the battle calmly. In the middle of the room, the thin katana clashed with the lizard's massive sword, and sparks flew in all directions. The force of the blow was so great that a strong energy wave almost swept the rest of the team away. Craig ordered the newcomers to retreat before they became incidental victims of this intense battle. The assassin was exhausted and couldn't say a word, thanking the support mage Craig for his rescue. Craig knocked the massive sword out of the lizard's hand with a skillful move, and the weapon fell to the stone floor. Fire ignited the man's katana again, and he decided to use his skills before the enemy recovered. Craig advanced, a few quick sword swings backed by skill, leaving the lizard standing behind him with large open wounds all over the monster's body. Green blood began to flow, and finally, the monster fell to the cold ground, unable to comprehend where its defeat had come from. Due to the effect of the skill and the clash with the enemy's massive sword, Craig's katana began to crumble in his hands. Craig noticed quick movement in front of him. Another lizard ran towards him, seemingly wanting to face a stronger opponent and leaving the newcomers to be devoured. This time, Craig decided to retreat. He jumped to the side to avoid the monster's strike. The lizard missed, and Craig barely managed to keep his balance after the quick move. Shin shouted to Craig, wanting to know how powerful the weapon was. The katana was almost entirely destroyed in the guild leader's hands, rendering it unsuitable for battle. Shin noted that such a weapon might come at a high cost. Craig initially wanted to trap the newcomers but was interrupted when he saw the weapon crafting skill. Shin paused for a moment as he crafted a new weapon for the experienced Craig. The man offered Craig to use the extraordinary katana crafted with mana. Shin requested not to waste another ordinary sword, especially since there was only one spare sword. Craig couldn't believe his eyes, a high-quality katana had been crafted by Shin in just a few swings. Craig wondered why an experienced assistant like that was working as a helper. Shin took the old sword from Craig's hand and stated his condition in exchange for the great weapon. He asked Craig to forget Shin's skills and himself after leaving the dungeon. However, Craig didn't think he could forget everything just because the assistant wanted him to. At the same moment, the katana forged by Shin began to melt in Craig's hands. Shin remarked that in this situation, the man had to cut down everyone with a high-end, expensive weapon. Realizing his desperate situation, Craig reluctantly agreed to forget about the man's skills. The team continued to battle the giant lizard while Craig and Shin negotiated the terms of their agreement. Finally, Shin smiled with satisfaction and invited Craig to try out the new weapon. Craig selected a new target, eager to see what this sensitive sword could do. Fortunately, there were still plenty of enemies in the room, and one of the lizards quickly moved towards the moving target. Craig swung the katana, unleashing its destructive power once again, and his eyes turned red. 
he crossed swords with the monster, and the room was once again filled with flashes of fire that illuminated everything around. The lizard screamed in pain and anger as its large sword began to shatter. Finally, half of the giant weapon was destroyed, much to Craig's surprise. He had only intended to parry the attack, but the result exceeded his expectations. He gripped the katana's hilt more tightly and thought that this weapon was not only better controlled but also naturally stronger than any sword he had bought. Craig glanced at Shin, who returned to his task of assisting and continued to extract mana stones. The lizard with the broken sword attacked Craig furiously, intending to finish off the arrogant man. Although Craig was distracted by his thoughts, he was quick enough to react to the counterattack. Craig plunged the katana deep into the belly of the large creature, thinking that the weapon deserved to be tested with skill. A large stream of fire tore through the lizard's body from within, piercing the monster. Craig grasped his opponent's shoulder to pull the sword from the monster's belly. He jumped on top of the lizard and chose a more advantageous position for the final blow. He raised the katana above his head, empowering the weapon with his skill, and plunged the red-hot sword into the lizard's head, destroying the monster's brain and neck. Green blood spurted from the defeated lizard's mouth, leaving a large, lifeless carcass on the ground. The enemy fell to the ground, and Craig stood over it like a hunter over his prey. Craig inspected the katana and was surprised to find not a single scratch after two uses of the skill. Craig was soon surrounded by novice team members who awkwardly thanked him for saving them from certain death. The man noted that no one was hurt, and that could be considered a success. With the loot and agreeing to accompany the guild leader in the final battle, the man explained that he would pursue Craig and not participate in the fight. The main prison room was filled with smoke from the torches burning on the walls, illuminating the cages hanging from the ceiling, clearly used for torturing the victims. As he entered the room, Craig froze in place, staring ahead and analyzing the strength of the opponent he saw. In the middle of the room, the prison chief sat on a throne, at his feet a giant reptile guard that looked more like a dragon than a lizard. Shin saw an interface providing information about the opponent and chose to ignore the disturbing engravings. Craig smiled, anticipating an entertaining fight and eager to try out his new katana. The chief said he would try to end the fight before the katana collapsed, and Shin replied that he was not joking about the quality of the weapon and it would never break. The reptile chief jumped off his throne, his eyes flashing with anger as he knew his kin were finished if these two men were in the throne room. He commanded the reptile guards to attack first, and they immediately obeyed. The creature's eyes turned red, allowing agility and speed to attack simultaneously. Both heroes almost responded simultaneously and dodged the deadly blow. Craig's eyes began to glow, and he slid towards the giant monster, but the reptile did not allow itself to be attacked. With a tail strike, it stopped the chief's movement. Thanks to his incredible reaction, he managed to escape Craig's attack. The guild leader flew away from the powerful strike, if not for the collision with the katana, the man would not have survived. After the sudden tail strike, the reptile's attack was so strong that Craig flew to the second floor and planted his feet on the ground above the main room. Using this position as a way to push off and gain speed, a new round began as he flew towards the main guard like a loaded cannon. The lizard chief jumped from the other end of the room and pushed the throne with his claws. In the middle of the room, the opponents exchanged blades and glared at each other, even a smile visible on the reptile's snout. Finally, the opponents leaped to opposite ends of the room. The lizard chief decided to use his aid and jumped onto the back of his follower's dragon, controlling the situation. A large stream of fire erupted from the dragon's mouth. To be under such a stream meant certain death. Craig used his sword to prevent damage from the firestorm, but suddenly he saw a power shield in front of him seconds before the collision. The fire hit the magical shield that appeared out of nowhere. The hero used his enhanced crafting skill to protect the guild leader from damage. The tame dragon tried to attack in close combat, using Craig's confusion, but the chief avoided the bite. He jumped back to Shin and asked how the man made the shield since he specialized in weapon crafting. Shin replied that a shield was also a type of weapon because it could cause damage. Craig smiled. The guild leader froze, waiting for the opponent's turn. He focused all his attention on the prison chief. The lizard smiled, raising its hand to use its trump card. A sharp blade connected to a long chain shot towards the guild leader at high speed, wrapping the chain around the katana, blazing with bright flames. Craig barely had enough time to notice the movement. The lizard pulled the chain tightly, holding the sword, and began to reel it in. The leader tried to disarm the enemy, realizing that with the katana in his hand, the guild leader was very dangerous. Without letting go of his sword, Craig flew along the chain towards the reptile, thinking hard about how to get out of this difficult situation. Shin urged the guild leader to stop playing around and continue the fight. The man raised his hand and used his power. A new sword began to form in Craig's left hand. Shin was very successful in speeding up the weapon-making process. Finally, a black katana appeared in the guild leader's hand, and he could continue the battle. Craig released the first blade, and the empty chain remained in the leader's hand. With the new weapon, the guild leader began to slaughter the makeshift dragon, giving it no chance to survive. 
The lizard leader did not expect such a trick and watched his dying comrade in confusion. After finishing off the dragon, Craig threw his katana at the monster with a powerful throw. The blade slid across the leader's shoulder, narrowly avoiding the deadly projectile. Taking advantage of the moment, the guild leader closed the distance and found himself close to the reptile. Craig delivered a powerful kick to the leader's torso, throwing him back several meters. The creature had no time to orient itself, and as it fell, a heavy blow hit its back. The monster began to lose its edge on the battlefield. Taking advantage of the reptile's confusion, the guild leader jumped into the air, forming another katana in his hand. Craig activated an ability that enhanced the sword's power, the blade coated with flames. The leader realized his life was about to end, able only to gaze at the dangerous enemy in admiration. The guild leader finally struck. A whirlwind of fire lit up the room, but the blade hit the ground hard. With inhuman reflexes, the lizard still managed to avoid the deadly blow, losing its left arm, the flesh burned by the intense heat. Not wanting to give up completely, the leader decided to try to kill at least one of the guild leader's followers. The monster grabbed a spear and started running towards the main character. The spear tip flew towards Sean's throat, but suddenly hit an insurmountable barrier. The lizard did not understand how the man was still standing. Shin was angry at the reptile's audacity, making the leader look utterly pathetic in front of the man. The guild leader approached the monster from behind, his gaze full of hatred and determination to end the duel. The last thing the old lizard saw in life with its remaining right eye was the katana blazing with bright flames. The spectators and journalists were still recording the gate where a group of newcomers had fallen. Finally, the color of the gate changed to blue, and the crowd cheered with joy. A group of people emerged from the gate. The team of newcomers led by Craig finally returned home. Journalists immediately surrounded the guild leader and began bombarding him with questions while the guards held back the press. Lucy ran to the guild leader, worried about his head, and asked if he needed medical help, but Craig replied that she should take care of the newly arrived team because they might be seriously injured. Shin returned the backpack full of mana gems to the group leader and told him he had received the advance payment and would go home to rest. Shin took one last look at the crowd gathered at the gate, turned around, and began his journey home, hoping to spend the night in peace. One of the journalists managed to approach the guild leader, bringing the microphone closer, and asked for a comment on how difficult it was to save the newcomers. Craig answered honestly that he couldn't do it alone, then turned to look for the mysterious assistant, but the man was already gone. The guild leader tried to find him in the crowd while the members of the newcomer team checked their damaged weapons and thanked Craig for his miraculous rescue. The guild leader patted one of the knights on the shoulder and shouted that they should thank the assistant who made weapons for everyone. However, the knight did not understand what he meant, saying there was no weapon maker in prison. The other team members confirmed the knight's words, they knew there was an assistant in prison, but he couldn't make weapons. The assassin and sorcerer previously saved by the guild leader remained silent. They were sure they had seen an axe in Shin's hands, but they saw that the man was still collecting mana stones and seemed to have simply lost the tool during the flight operation. Craig didn't understand how the team could fail to remember that one of the assistants had made weapons for them. Finally, the guild leader realized that Shin used a magical calculation skill that erased the memories of those who agreed to the man's terms. Craig's assistant did not understand why the leader fell silent and could not utter a word. Suddenly, the guild leader tossed a large bag of weapons into his assistant's hands and started sprinting towards the park without reacting to the crowd's sudden amazement. The assistants could only guess the reason for the guild leader's strange behavior. Meanwhile, Craig ran without looking back, hoping to catch up with his valuable ally. The leader ran to the park and began searching for Shin throughout the area, but there was no sign of him on the park benches or in the central square. Craig realized that he had lost Shin and looked around the square once more. Finally, he turned and began his journey back to the gate he had just passed. Craig's assistant followed their leader and asked for an explanation of what had happened. The guild leader ordered his assistant to urgently search for one person, and Shin was entirely convinced that every participant in the flight operation to the dungeon had forgotten him. He continued his journey calmly towards home. Back at the guild headquarters, Lucy immediately started looking for information about Shin. She managed to find out that Shin had gone underground again a few hours ago. Craig thanked the girl for her quick and efficient work. Lucy asked the guild leader to explain why he was so interested in a low-ranking assistant, but Craig was certain that the assistant's unassuming appearance was deceiving. The guild leader leaned back in his chair and pondered about the mysterious assistant from the dungeon. He thought that if the assistant didn't use his calculation skills at such a high level, no one would uncover the extraordinary abilities of the young man. Craig had firmly decided to recruit Shin into his guild. The leader looked at his hands and recalled the incredible sensation of immense power emanating from the sword crafted by Shin. He had never experienced anything like it before. Not only was the fabric crafted with skill, but it also allowed Craig to fully unleash his destructive abilities. The guild leader had seen many weapon makers and tried hundreds of swords. 
He had traveled to various countries to meet blacksmiths considered the best in their field. Craig had always been very particular about selecting weapons and at high standards. Each blacksmith was confident in the quality of their products and usually asserted that their products would withstand any inspection. Craig carefully tested every sample he received. He even brought along weak monsters to test under combat conditions that were close to reality. But every time, the guild leader was disappointed with the weapons offered. With clear dissatisfaction, he returned the test samples to the blacksmiths. After all, every sword offered for testing failed and broke after using the guild leader's skills. Every blacksmith was shocked by the failure, tearing their hair, and Craig left empty-handed, hoping to finally find at least one suitable sword elsewhere. Rumor had it that one blacksmith quit his profession because he couldn't bear the shame. But the weapons made by Shin were different from all the others. The guild leader wouldn't have believed it if he hadn't seen with his own eyes how the man created a sword like no other with extraordinary properties. Craig took a deep breath and asked Lucy what was on his schedule for the day. The girl reminded him of a meeting with another guild leader, but the man asked to postpone the event because he would leave early for the wild forest far from the city. A new gateway to the dungeon opened this time, waiting for bloodthirsty goblins for the heroes beyond the gate. A knight quickly attacked one of the monsters with a few swings. The tank was very surprised by the quality of the weapon made by the assistant. The sword made by the unassuming boy easily surpassed even the dungeon leader's weapons. Shin himself, as usual, was collecting mana crystals far from the raging battle. The knight couldn't stop admiring the protagonist's skillful work. The tank said he had never seen a sword of such high quality before and examined the weapon from all sides. He sincerely thanked the assistant for his sword, which greatly helped the team. The knight offered to recruit the valuable boy into his guild, and the wizard supported the idea. They felt that the man deserved more than just being a low-paid assistant for every dungeon. Shin heard this conversation and was distracted from his work. He thought he had spent more mana than he had planned because the group could barely handle the low-level dungeon. Shin recalled his first journey where he became a gambler in an instant. In the battle with the golem, the hero felt a vast mana reserve and couldn't imagine this could happen, but everything was spent on destroying the monster and hadn't recovered since then. Therefore, for the time being, Shin now only had a small mana reserve, corresponding to his level. The hero was glad because he gained new experience for the future, and now there were no issues in making weapons. After all, the quality of the items made was determined by the amount of mana spent. There was another way to improve the quality of the weapons made, which was to study the principles of making them in the real world. The hero remembered how much he trained after learning that one could reach new heights by studying weapons. His training was not in vain, and Shin received results tenfold. After all, he used mana more efficiently, otherwise, his reserves would not be enough to make high-quality weapons. However, the hero decided that he needed to work to increase the amount of mana because calculation skills also consumed a considerable amount. Although there was equipment in the world that could increase the supply of magical energy, it was very expensive and not available to the hero. Shin could only afford to buy mana potions, which at least had some effect on his situation. The hero checked his account balance and saw that with his salary as an assistant, it would be difficult for him to buy the potions. Shin also checked the mana recharge bar for the task and was dissatisfied with the low efficiency, only 1% per dungeon. Thanks to the dungeons with error levels, the hero received more mana from high-level opponents, but it was impossible to understand the dungeon level until entering it. For instance, the last operation was more difficult without Craig's help. Shin decided that he needed to find a dungeon with a suitable boss to earn rewards as soon as possible. Finally, the team exited the gate, and the captain thanked everyone for their good work. The hero stayed at the exit for a while to check if everything went according to plan. The calculations began, and the entire group forgot about the assistant's magical ability to create weapons. Suddenly, Shin was called by his name from behind. The man thought his calculations could still be wrong. He turned nervously, trying to find a solution to the problem, but the guild leader and his assistant quickly approached the hero. Craig greeted Shin, and the man realized that calculations did not help erase the memories of experienced people who had awakened. Shin tried to joke that he was seeing a man for the first time, but Craig asked the man not to run away and listen because his offer was really worthwhile. The guild leader held a black and red business card with the organization's emblem. Shin took the business card in his hand and examined it carefully, looking at the small plastic piece with only a name. The guild and its emblem were very proud, but this was enough for the hero to understand that they were talking about one of the best guilds in the country. Shin realized that it was too early to join such a large organization and wanted to decline politely, but the man could only evade crudely and said he didn't have time and needed to leave immediately. Craig held the hero's shoulder firmly and said the man would not regret the conversation. Furthermore, the conversation would not take much time, and he promised to treat him to dinner. Shin noticed that such a famous guild leader had a lot of free time to spend on a low-level recruit. Finally, Shin agreed to talk and asked him not to hold him without a clear reason. 
Craig just smiled contentedly, expecting much from the dinner and promised not to waste Chin's precious time. The car stopped at a traditional Asian-style restaurant. Craig and Lucy sat across from Shin at a table with expensive, delicious dishes. Shin began the conversation and asked the guild leader to get straight to the point and explain that he didn't understand why one of the best guilds in the country needed an ordinary assistant. Craig began to explain the reason for inviting the hero to the conversation. The guild leader was very angry and needed weapons that could withstand a great burden in battle. This chapter tells of his journey around the world searching for the perfect sword. He even asked the most skilled magical weapon makers, but the blades always remained the same regardless of the product's quality or magic level. All blades could not withstand the guild leader's power and broke in his hands. Craig said he met the only exception after a long search. He recalled his meeting with Shin in the dungeon and said the only sword that survived was the blade made by Shin. Shin listened to the story quietly and reminded himself to be careful when using his recovery ability, as in this case, it did not work at all. The hero leaned on the table, waiting for Craig's story to end. The guild leader drank tea and finally decided to tell Shin the reason he called him. The man invited the hero to join the Overkill organization. Lucy couldn't believe her ears because her leader offered a huge salary to a few assistants. Craig explained the terms, an excellent salary, covering all expenses, and a one-year contract. However, Shin didn't listen to the guild leader and interrupted him in mid-sentence. Shin got up from the table and said he would not join any guild at this time, thanked him for the delicious dinner, and said it was time for him to leave. Craig tried to stop the hero, but he had already left the room and did not listen to the story. Lucy was surprised by such a generous offer from her leader and wondered what made him propose such terms. Craig explained that the girl didn't realize how good the boy's weapons were. The guild leader said he hadn't felt a sense of unity with a blade in a long time. With such a weapon, he felt capable of anything. However, he pointed out that the purpose of the offer was also financial gain. Lucy realized that the guild leader spent a lot of money on weapons that always broke, but Craig had no choice because he needed a sword to use his abilities. The girl admitted that, with those profits, the contract amount seemed small. She kept wondering where else she could find such a weapon maker and concluded that so far, she only knew one suitable candidate. That is why she would not stop trying to recruit Shin into the guild by any means, no matter what the hero wanted in return. The hero returned home and thought that he didn't expect an offer from one of the best guilds so soon. He thought that with that salary, he could buy better equipment, but he decided to be patient and wait. The Great Hall, like a medieval arena, was covered in bloodstains and mist. Around were defeated goblins, low-level monsters, but the main danger in the dungeon did not come from the little green-skinned creatures. The knight saw the man standing in front of him and demanded an explanation. The mysterious opponent held his large sword and the sword lying on the ground. A wicked smile appeared on his face, and he said that people usually begged not to be killed instead of asking stupid questions. The knight thought he was just an ordinary thief stealing from low-level groups, but Jack replied that he didn't want to spend extra energy explaining his motives, but he was ready to share information if the knight could win the duel. The knight thought he had no chance and analyzed his opponent's weaknesses. The knight shouted and ran towards Jack, trying to get close and attack. The two warriors raised their swords and struck each other. Their blades clashed and sparked, and Jack just smiled at his opponent. The knight struggled to defeat his opponent and thought of his next move. Finally, the tank kept attacking and decided to deliver as many blows as possible. Jack countered every attack effortlessly and seemed bored. Finally, the villain snatched the sword from the knight's hands, and the blade flew high. Taking advantage of the man's confusion, Jack kicked his stomach hard, causing the poor man to fly to the other end of the hall. The knight clutched his stomach, feeling fortunate to have survived the attack and escaped with only a few broken bones. But Jack was ready to correct this oversight. He walked toward the tank, dragging his heavy sword along the ground. The man's nerves began to fray, and he started pleading for mercy from the villain, tears streaming down his cheeks and his body trembling with fear and pain. A smile spread across the cruel killer's face as he raised his massive sword above the knight. Despite the weapon's weight, Jack ended his opponent with a small movement, beheading him. Finally, there wasn't a single living creature left in the hall except for Jack himself, along with the goblins and people lying on the ground, mostly shattered into pieces. The villain felt disappointed by this quick ending and wished he could find an evenly matched opponent for the first time in a long while. Jack was drawn to the expression on the enemy's severed head and began talking to the corpse. Then, he pulled a phone from his robe pocket and promised to tell everyone that the knight had bravely slain the leader. Jack started taking photos of the enemy's remains, saying that such losses were common in dungeons with the wrong ranking. The villain looked at the photos with an obsessive smile, some pictures turned out well. He liked collecting items, and maybe photos with defeated enemies were his favorite items in that collection. While browsing through the gallery, the villain was distracted by an unexpected feeling that shook his whole body. He sensed a sly energy and demanded its wielder hide their aura or come out and stop hiding. 
A tall and slender girl entered the dungeon, easily opening the heavy gate. Her body was surrounded by a strange light. Jack said that he wasn't wrong when he asked the head not to rush into this dungeon because there was nothing useful here. Karen turned and asked the villain how he dared to contradict her. Jack quickly changed the topic and asked the girl to clear the dungeon, and the witch began using her magical powers. At the end of their conversation, the villain reminded Karen of her promise to give him a high-ranking hero to smash into tiny pieces as part of continuing the demonic ritual. The girl said she would keep her promise and would soon bring Jack. A bright light started emanating from the wounds on the defeated knight's body. After a moment, claws clearly belonging to a monster emerged from there. Karen saw the monster in front of her and smiled happily. The girl's cheeks flushed as if she saw something cute. She was thrilled with the summoning. This time, she had managed to get an incredible demon, and the result exceeded her expectations. Reaching high levels in the dungeon wasn't easy, but if Shin joined the Overkill Guild, he could access gates of any level. Shin realized that in their world, the name and reputation of the guild a hunter joined could work wonders. Every organization had its fans and envious people who worshipped or hated the guild members. Salaries and the number of rewards for completing dungeons also depended on the guild's level. Members of large, popular organizations not only received extensive responsibilities but also certain rights. For example, they might get permission to enter rare gates and accessible to ordinary awakened people. Of course, the rewards in such dungeons differed markedly from others and opened new opportunities not only financially. Craig said that anyone who awakened should strive to reach their goal, and by joining the Overkill Guild, Shin would achieve incredible heights. However, Shin firmly refused to join Craig's guild. Like everyone else, the guild leader was surprised by Shin's words, because anyone who awakened would do anything to join such a famous and powerful company. Craig quietly observed Shin, trying to understand the reason behind his refusal to join anywhere. The guild leader suggested that the man might have a strong reason to refuse, one of which might be the recent loss of allies in a gate due to an error. The group continued to move deeper into the cave, and the witch girl Anita lit the way with her staff. Andrew, a young swordsman, suddenly got caught in a thick web hanging above him. The witch raised her staff, and the group saw the ceiling of the cave full of spider webs. The group leader, John, instructed everyone to stay alert as they were entering monster territory. Intelligence reported that the dungeon was inhabited by about a hundred legion spiders, which were only a threat in large numbers, but not individually. The captain added that the spider's fangs contained a paralyzing toxin. While preparing weapons, the guild leader asked Shin to stay away from the attacking enemies, but Shin asked them not to worry about him and calmly prepared for battle. Craig disagreed, thinking that all team members should protect the supporting hunter. The conversation was cut short by a sharp sound echoing through the cave, and the whole team stared into the darkness, trying to see their opponent. Hundreds of sharp claws covered in steel appendages tapped the floor and ceiling of the cave, moving toward the heroes. These were legion spiders that not only wanted to protect their nest but also craved fresh human flesh. Seeing the dozens of monsters, Andrew began to tremble and tried to calm himself. The spiders relentlessly approached their prey. Up close, the monsters looked massive. Finally, the swarm attacked the team, and venom flowed from their jaws in all directions, quickly surrounding the heroes. Andrew split the first enemy in half, and the foolish spiders leapt onto the shield covering the hero. In seconds, the warrior sent another giant insect flying, green blood splattering against the cave walls. The monsters seemed unaware of the barrier formed by the tank's shield, reinforced with magical skills, and continued to attack the team. The tank used a deadly strike ability, sending the corpses of spiders flying to the other end of the cave. Anita wasted no time, raising her staff above her head and preparing to cast a spell. Bolts of lightning flew from her staff toward the enemy. The spiders had no defense against magic, and their weak defenses and low health left them no chance of survival. Craig had not yet joined the fight and felt relieved to see that his team was managing against the enemy, despite the hunter's relatively low levels. The guild leader was surprised to see Shin observing something in the depths of the cave. It was a new batch of monsters quickly moving toward the team, clearly intent on destroying the arrogant humans. The spiders surrounded the group from behind, attempting to strike the exposed flank, where there were only two heroes. Craig readied his weapon, the blade of his sword engulfed in flames. The guild leader wielded the fire like a sword, slicing through the bodies of the insects. One strike from Craig destroyed dozens of spiders, and their charred corpses fell to the cave floor. Craig continued his assault, pleased that the enemies were so weak. After all that, Craig didn't even need to use his sword in battle, he only needed the energy from his skills to fight the enemy. The guild leader heard a cry for help and paused his next attack to understand what was happening. Insects surrounded the remaining group, who were not accustomed to dealing with so many monsters at once. The tank cursed the scout, who had warned of far fewer monsters in the dungeon. 
The warrior and the wizard fought with all their remaining strength, and the wizard was nearly out of mana from the previous attacks. Craig realized that the hunters wouldn't last long at this rate, and needed to help their allies. The guild leader asked Shin to follow him so he wouldn't fall into the hands of the monsters, but Shin asked Craig not to worry and to help the others while he dealt with the rest himself. A spider leapt and was about to attack Shin from above. Craig thought Shin would be finished soon because he wouldn't be able to dodge the monster's sharp jaws, but Shin froze in place and closed his eyes as if he had lost the last instinct for survival. Finally, Shin opened his eyes, filled with a bright blue light, a clear sign of using mana. 